Hi everybody, welcome back. I just got back to the shop after a test drive on a 2011 Hyundai Santa Fe 3.5 liter V6 dual overhead cam. 226,784 miles. It's got a track system warning light, ABS warning light, and brake system warning light indicator that are illuminated on the dash. This thing's here for various concerns, and I'm going to start with these warning lights. Oh, that one just went off. How about that? Anyway, I'm going to start with these warning lights. I'm going to pull up the trouble codes. I've already got the scan tool riding with me. Okay, diagnostic trouble code C1209, right rear speed sensor open or short. So let's uh, pull up the data real quick. I want to see if there's any signal coming out of the right rear speed sensor. Also, while I was driving, it was very faint, but I heard it. I can hear a uh, kind of like a helicopter sounding noise coming from the fronts. I do believe that this thing has a uh, worn out wheel bearing or wheel bearings. I felt it in both directions. Turning left, I heard a grind. Turning right, I heard a grind, and it seemed to move side to side. Sometimes it's a little tough to uh, to kind of pick out those noises, but uh, I do believe I heard two different noises. Uh, anyway. Uh, backing up and working on the uh, the diagnostic trouble code for the right rear speed sensor noise I'm gonna highlight that PID and what we're gonna do is just move the vehicle I'm gonna back up pull forward a little bit and uh, we're gonna observe the wheel speed sensor let's see what they say oh they're not saying anything none of them let's get out of here and go a little faster exiting shop now alrighty slow rolling through the parking lot at approximately seven or eight miles per hour, we can see that the left front, right front, and left rear wheel speed sensors are all indicating actual vehicle speed. The right rear wheel speed sensor is not indicating any vehicle speed. So back to the shop we go, and uh, let's take a look at that right rear and see what's going on. Okay, now just because it's saying that the do 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 do, it's saying that the right rear wheel speed sensor is not producing a signal that does not necessarily mean that the sensor or the bearing is faulty it could be a wiring issue could be a connecting issue connect door issue it also could be an issue with the actual electronic brake control module so uh, that is what we are going to determine first okay you guys have seen me do this before i'm going to show you the kind of the quick and easiest way to uh, to diagnose this and confirm whether it's a bad uh, wheel speed sensor uh, incidentally, this one is located as part of the bearing assembly. But we're just going to confirm or deny whether this is a, uh, a faulty wheel speed sensor or not. Uh, considering that the wheel speed sensors are most probable for the cause, I'm just going to go straight for that. And if I prove that it is not in fact the sensor, uh, we can move on to additional diagnosis. Uh, basically what I'm going to do is disconnect the sensor. I'm going to probe these connectors and I'm going to run a jumper wire from the right rear, the one that had the code, over to the circuit for the left rear. See, we know the left rear is good. It was giving us a signal and uh, it was giving us a reading regarding wheel speed. So we're just gonna probe this guy and then wire it up to the other side. And if we get a reading where it shows that the right rear has wheel speed, that will confirm that the right rear wheel speed sensor and wheel bearing assembly is indeed faulty. Okay, pins are connected. Jumper wire is connected to another jumper wire. That jumper wire is connected to the pins on the left rear known good wheel speed sensor. So back to the scan tool we go. Okay, I've left this down some to a more comfortable working height. Let's get back into the cabin, key it on, reestablish communication to the ABS module. And then we're just gonna turn this wheel by hand while watching the data on the scan tool. And if we see a value show up for the right rear, because we have the left rear connected to the circuit on the right rear, if we see a value show up on the right rear, then we will know that the circuit is good, the module is good, the connector is good, and we can then conclude that the wheel speed sensor and wheel bearing assembly is faulty. So here we go, rotating the wheel, and yep. Look at that right there. Yep, four, five, six miles per hour. That confirms we have a faulty wheel bearing slash wheel speed sensor on the right rear position of this truck. So that is one line item diagnosed. Okay, we have circumnavigated time and skipped straight ahead to the approval and repair phase. 
going to go ahead and pull this bearing out. I've got a new one sitting over there on the floor. It just got delivered. First thing we gotta do, pull the caliper off, pull the caliper bracket off, and then the rudder has to come off because the bearing slides out from the, the knuckle. I wanted to call it a spindle at first, but yeah, the knuckle assembly. And it's bolted in from the back side, so we need to get all this stuff out of the way, unbolt the bolts, slide hammer, possibly slide hammer, the uh, bearing assembly out, and then the new one can go in. Now, these rotors are bolted on flush with the hub face with these set screws right here. These guys are often difficult to get out, so I'm gonna use an impact driver that's attached to a lever, that's attached to a screwdriver bit, Phillips bit, to break these guys loose. Slight pressure that way, and there it goes. And same thing on this side right here. A couple little impacts, breaks right loose, no problem. Um, I do not know what this is called and where I got it. Perhaps Google searching. Once they are loose, a traditional screwdriver will finish them off. Now the clearance on this makes me sad because I can't fit any power tools in. So I'll just do this the analog way. Reverse clicks. Okay, come on bracket, you are coming with me with a reverse click. <clears throat> I lied, I can fit power tools in here. <laughs> yeah. Put your minds out of the gutters. Let's come back here and get these bolts for the bearing. Again, time for some uh, reverse clicks here. Oh, those are kind of tight. Thank you for making that sound stop. It was hurting my brain. Turn on. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, my tool broke down. I think I have a crappy battery. Yeah, one of these batteries has a, a bad pin. And it doesn't make good connections. I usually use it for my radio. Okay, that's four bolts. Out. Okay, back around to this side. So this is going to come out one of two ways. Easily or not. Oh, whoa! I did not expect that to happen. Anyway, so here's the backing plate, parking brake assembly, adjuster, parking brake cable. You got me. I need to amend that last statement. It's gonna come out one of three ways. It's easily, not easily, or it's gonna fly out and hit me in the foot. Uh, it chose option C. This flapper wheel is kind of overkill for the situation, but I like it. it. Makes everything nice and shiny.
good. You miss. Okay, here's the new hub assembly. Here's our hub, new wheel studs. The bearings are encased inside of here. And also in there is the ABS slash wheel speed sensor. So they all come as one unit now. Some, some of them are. Some manufacturers still use independent sensors. Some build them as a singular unit. is this? Hang on, I got some maneuvering to do here. You know, I go through this time and time again over parts. I, I don't, we just continue to repeat this process and I don't understand why. Do do do, look at this right here. Okay, we've got a measurement. Look at that one. We're like a quarter of an inch off. Let's measure center to center on the bolts. Those kind of fit. But the thing doesn't fit in between the, uh, the brake shoes. Yeah, and if I try to make it fit, then the shoes are spread because they're contacting the, uh, the flanges for the bolts market parts uh, um, it's not even a move part if it was a move part that wouldn't happen but you know you get what you pay for and we continue to do this here it's bothering me I'll be back parts return see you guys in a minute see examples like this is why it's better to be on the non plan plan that way you don't have to worry about things going sideways if there is no plan then you don't have to get your plans interrupted Let's see. coming in from the back yeah I know what I'm gonna do I know I know I know I'll make this easy on myself oh geez. ah gravity almost I don't know, what'd you do with it? <laughs> oh, you give up so easily. They don't know where their wheel lock key is. All right, let's sneak back around to this side and finish these bolts off. A click. Okay, and of course, the all important ABS connector. That way, the EVCM knows that the bearing is here. All right, now that this is all in good working order, we must make it shiny. No need in having dirty parking brake shoes or a brake clean chair. Since I have the opportunity to clean this up right now, I will take it. Very good. Okay. Let's clean this guy up. It's got uh, an oil coating on it to prevent corrosion while in transit and in storage. And let's align the set screw hole there and there. Good. I like it. Another. Okay. First things first, let's lose the shims because we need to put in new shims. 
I'll use my new knife that someone sent me as a present. That's actually no knife. Dash is a knife. Like, that's a serious knife. Dang, I'm afraid of this thing. Look at this. Watch this. That's dangerous, especially in my hand. Like, I don't know if you like me if you're mad at me. Either way, thanks for the knife. You know, I, I say someone, but I mean, I know who you are, but everyone else does not, and I'm not going to tell them. Privacy is important. Wipe that old crust out of there. Is that silicone? No. I don't know what that was. Either way, it's gone now. Get in there, new shim. They clip on in the center and those clips are sometimes stubborn. And this is one of those times you will comply. Or not. Let's try again on this side. See if it fits any better. Get down there. Why? Just a wee bit of flexing. Still doesn't want to go. There. Stay. Yeah, see these little tabs are sticking out kind of far. It's okay, I will modify them. Just they don't stick out so much. Sideways, press, and almost good. That one's kind of flared up a little bit. That's fine. I'll just force it. Needle nose hammer. There. It's good. And let's re lube our sliding shafts. That's all dried up and crusty. There. bracket on and caliper and then we can call it a day uh-oh I forgot a lock washer Oh, while it's out, I'll keep using my, my wobbly extension. Click. The inboard pad had the wear indicator, the outboard pad did not. So I'm putting putting the new ones in in the same orientation. Uh, where's my caliper? I hung it up somewhere. 
Okay. Let's put you guys right here. I'm going to compress this piston with my caliper compressing tool that I relentlessly sell you guys on Amazon that is located in the links down below. And I lied. It's too big. It does not fit. Okay. Okay, seeing as how my caliper compressor does not fit, let's come up with a different solution. So, stick a pad in there, and I'll use my big channel locks. The reason the pad is there is the channel locks can break the piston, which would be bad, because it tends to put a side load when you squeeze. What you need? Just the key press and the order. Uh, the one with the yellow tag on it? Yeah. That's tight. Times two. Click. Of course the set screws have to go in. Show you guys another cool trick. This is why I like these snap-on screwdrivers. I think uh, like Carlisle and some other manufacturers have a similar feature. See how it's got that hex uh, hex design right here at the base. Watch this. Put a wrench on them. Push and use leverage for torque. Uh oh. Click. Okay, now that that is done, the ABS system and wheel speed sensor should be functioning. So let's bust out the scanning tool again, reconnect, and we're just gonna recheck and make sure that those uh, open slash short codes for that speed sensor circuit are no longer present. And once we confirm that, that will finalize this particular video and uh, we can call this one good. Okay, inside, scan tool's powering on car is powering on. Let's get back into this and we're going to reobserve the rear wheel speed sensors. I'm going to throw the wheel on the right rear, turn it, and then you guys can watch the right rear show that it is working. That will be confirming the fix. So we're going to history, Santa Fe 2011. Yes. Uh, yes. All right. We're going into data. Come on now. Okay, scrolling down here to right rear wheel speed sensor. Right rear wheel speed. I'm gonna set you guys up right here and I'm gonna go turn that wheel. All right, right rear is ready to go. Stand by, I'm gonna go turn the wheel. We're looking over here at the number that's highlighted and we're looking for a value to appear. And we have a wheel speed sensor reading, made it up to like four or five, six miles per hour. I didn't actually see the end of it, but that does confirm the repair. We are good to go. ABS system is now functioning as designed. Okay, now that the trouble codes are clear, we're gonna climb up in here, restarting the engine. Okay, we have no ABS traction control or brake warning looming. What? Why are you here? Wow, there's extras. Oh, they're gone now, okay. I don't know what that was about. Check for codes real quick, like. That was kind of weird, I must say. No, yeah, all right. I guess we're good. Yeah, that was a little odd. They came on, came back off again. Don't know what that was about. Just rechecked the module, no codes there. Uh, the light is now, all the lights, ABS, warning, 
and uh, brake warning indicator are all off now. That confirms the repair and finalizes it. Uh, that being said, this is going to confirm and finalize this particular video. I want to go ahead and take this opportunity to thank all you guys for watching this video. I want to let you know that I appreciate you being here, especially since you're here all the way to the end. Since you are here all the way to the end, I'm going to go ahead and assume that you like this video. And if you did like this video, the only thing I would ask of you is to communicate that to me effectively by tapping tapping that like button down below. That button is what lets me and YouTube know that I've done a good job here. And if YouTube thinks that I've done a good job, it is far more likely to recommend my content to other potential viewers. And that's good for me. That's also good for the viewers. Having said all that, that will conclude my shameless moment of self-promotion. And since that moment is now over, the only thing left here for me to do is to remind you guys to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. Hi on day powering down. Pew. Repair complete. Oh, and by the way, in case you're wondering, the left rear brake job is also done.